Good morning. Barbarism and civilization. <clears throat> what opposes civilization, perhaps we say uncivil uncivilization or uncivilized, but what opposes civilization is barbarism. What are the signs, indications of civilization and what are the signs or indications of barbarism? How can we determine this? Well, <clears throat> there is a definition in the regular dictionary about the advanced technology, evolution, and again, this is a dictionary. We are just sharing some ideas. I want to give some ideas. Perhaps, uh, I should say weird, sometimes strange, but uh, you know, that's my opinion. I don't know. Civilization is constantly, exponentially into development, into evolution. Barbarism, no. It wears the uniform of civilization, but it will collapse all the time. It gets show off, it gets flagrant, it gets, it gives some sort of like quintessential, a quintessential image of something, quintessential beauty of something is the perfect utopian this is what barbarism weaves the uniform of you know quintessential image of perfection and then it collapses its time is spent all just maintaining that status unlike civilization civilization no i'm talking about civilization civilization no it gets developed most of the time, it doesn't leave residues, an outside residues, milestone, rocks, whatever, in the external world. This is what civilization is. Barbarism and civilization. When we say civilization, we are talking about two things. In the objective well, if we say civilization, it is like you are talking about generosity and you try to visualize the generosity. Yeah, well, <laughs> there is someone who has to be incarnated in this generosity or generosity is inside him in order for us to see generosity. The same thing. Now we're talking about human being, of course. Human being is civilized. This one is barbaric. For most of people, the way they interpret, as I said initially, when they interpret civilization, barbarism, they have their way. Civilization is developing the self. Barbarism, no. Developing something outside the self. Civilization is developing the real center of the person, le moi, the me, id. Barbarism, no, is developing something, is always to simulate and dissimulate. To simulate is to pretend to be someone good, someone positive, of course, between brackets. Person is not. To dissimulate is something negative. To pretend not to be the most negative, but the person is lives always with this. Civilization, no, it's a possession. Barbarism lives with the challenge. Civilization doesn't live with the challenge. Barbarism creates adversaries. Civilization doesn't create adversaries. Barbarism, every venue in life, is in a gladiatorial arena where he has to prove what it has and he has to prove himself. Civilization, no. 
he doesn't have civilization doesn't have gladiatorial arena now if it's the case why this person develops the self this person doesn't develop the self why let's go a little bit deep not to scratch the surface speaking like scrutinizing what the person is <clears throat> who is he person is exposed in this world is exposed to consciousness we say exposed to consciousness what does it mean he is a receiver of a conscience he is a receiver he is a dependent sometimes in history through the pages of history he starts visualizing certain things and glorifying the things and then he is submissive to this god could be jupiter could be poseidon could be athena could be the sun the moon sometimes human being himself fashioned god and then he is becomes devoted to this god well he has to give this belligerence or this kind of a glory to someone why because he is dependent the role of the prophets when they come is just to direct the orient to say this is not this is not the god i show him the moon is looking at my finger they show people the real god to become submissive exposed with their consciousness the mind that is exposed to the real the consciousness that is exposed worship to the lordship this is the person who develops the self well listen i'm an atheist i don't don't want to know about these things you understand don't tell me about these things that's fine you know we're not saying the person should follow such and such we are giving we are scrutinizing how the emotions become when they do such and such or when they are exposed to such and such the person cannot avoid from being exposed to one of three audiences to expose his again his devotion people most of the time to the culture to his culture environment and that cultural environment has a reputation and then in order for this culture to validate you you have to behave certain way you have to sacrifice to show to gain a celebrity status in that environment culture nationalism uh, any kind of sectarianism whatever if this audience is absent your emotions will fail to develop your emotions are centered by the audience that you devote yourself to in other words you are centralized when you speak about space wise you are punctualized when you speak about time wise and the way you behave you know three space time and manner you are really guided in in reality you are really guided cannot help but to be really guided and that's the slavery so it has to be present and my emotions my behavior has to be in order for it to be validated it has to be this it has to be exposed to this particular audience so it's not the me exactly the me cannot be the conscience of the me doesn't get developed dependent when it depends on a creature like itself how can you be beyond time space and manner it is only when you are exposed to the sublimity to the oneness of god so far you are only transporter this uniqueness that you claim you developed it based on a challenge based on an audience like you creature like you it is only creating adversaries in order to beat them the one who develops under the oneness of god that it be on time space and manner this is the one who develops his uniqueness 
Civilization doesn't have a gladiatorial arena. Unlike barbarism, barbarism is all the time. Starting from parenthood, who try to use the kid as an extension to their life. From the cultural environment surrounding is only the person is only responding to these to please and to be characterized by this cultural event, this national event, as you, as you can see today in the world. Person cannot be happy, cannot even admire another person from another nationality, unless his, its country say, oh, these are our allies. Ah, oh, they are allies. I'm going to love that. And even if a person is in love with the, a woman from that country, he, doesn't, he cannot love her. Or he, she cannot love him because, uh, you know, the political arena, the two gladiatorial, you know, in the political arena, gladiatorial arena, they say they are not, uh, they are not our allies. Okay, so we don't love each other. So the love is, if the audience is absent or the constituents of the ego fail to respond to that kind of requirements, the person is not, is dependent, he has a penchant, he creates for himself crunches. You have legs, quadriceps, gluteus in the back of your lower back. You know, no, abandon that. You have to rely on crunches. Create an handicap for yourself. Barbarism, civilization. A barbarism from his early age, as I said, a kid is already doesn't feel satisfied that unless there is a challenge. The way you see today, is, for instance, the United States, America, and all those who follow. The whole world, the whole world is westernized. When you hear people about, especially students, they say, I like challenge. What is really annoying and it is said to say it, Muslims. <laughs> Muslims were raised, were taught from early stage to be humble, polite to the lower themselves. They pick up words and they just verbalize them. You know what I'm saying? And Parkerism and Suivism, the followism, Parkerism, and they repeat, and that's civilization. That's set. It is too set. And why not? And then they argue. <clears throat> As I said, barbarism is always looking every venue. It's a gladiatorial arena where I have to prove myself. To whom? I have to prove myself, you know. There is an audience. That will validate me. These are spectators. Yes, sure, of course. This is barbarism. Now, the existence of a human being, this challenge, the word ja challenge, if it goes, he is only challenging God. Barbarism is challenging God. What does it mean? We're going to give an example of two things to complete each other. Complementarity, which is H2O. This is creature, you know, we know that's, uh, you know, the equation. H2O, two atoms of hydrogen, one of our atom of oxygen. You know, it cannot be. It cannot, you cannot put three atoms, four. You cannot have to put two and one in order to have water, the sign of life. It cannot be. There's no superiority, there's no inferiority. These are just something to complete. Same thing about male and a female. You know, male is testosterone and estrogen small. A woman, estrogen high, es or testosterone low to complete each other. The one plus one equal one. Speaking about chromosomic composition, 
we have 46. I'm not quite sure. 23 Y's that, that represent masculinity and the 23 X's that represent femininity. A woman carries only the 23 X's that represents femininity. That's her place there. God forbid, we're speaking about a human being. If you try to challenge God with your superiority, you cannot approach God. You are not in the existence. You are outside. You create adversaries. You create adversaries all the time. And like the, civiliza the civilized person, the humble person doesn't look right and wrong, where right or left for a challenger. The biggest challenger that exists within the civilized person is his ego. That's the biggest challenge. If he wants to make like hand wrestling, he hand wrestles the ego to get to God. Unlike the barbaric barbarism, no, he develops the ego and the ego creates adversaries. The day of the sacrifice. The day of the sacrifice, of the exam, the day that we will see who is right and wrong. Two people, brother and sister, brother, two brothers, sorry, Cain and Abel, it's written everywhere, everybody knows them. God said about them, they said, all of a sudden, they decided to give a sacrifice. That's how it is written. All of a sudden, إِذْ قَرَّبَ قُرْبَانًا You know, you know. In the beginning of the verse, وَتْلُ عَلَيْهِمْ نَبَأَ أَبْنَيْ آدَمَ بِالْحَقِّ Say, tell them, O Prophet of God, Muhammad, this is God said it to Muhammad, tell them the truth. Why you say tell the truth? It is the day to confess. You know, there were lies before. That's why, because there were lies. They were in the first testament and the second testament. Fabricated stories. Why the origin in this? Because the brother and the sister, they were twins and the other one was prettier. He wanted, God told them to switch with. All of these were fabricated because they couldn't get to the truth. The truth is not because what you like this. Tell them the truth about the sons of Adam. If all of a sudden they decided to give a sacrifice. What did they give? We have no idea. We have no idea. I don't know. They slaughter an animal? I don't know. To give it to whom? What does it mean to give a sacrifice to someone or to give the sacrifice for the sake of someone? To give sacrifice to someone, that's a gesture. You know, goes from you to that person. Usually you slaughter an animal, you give it to people. You give it to poor people. This is the outside event, objective event. What is inside? We're going to get to that. I mean, deeply in the psyche of the person. To give sacrifice for the sake of someone is who, which audience dominated your conscience at the time of the event, of the sacrifice, that you felt devoted to while humiliating yourself to such a point of the degree of effacement. It's up to you. How much is the glory of to the, to the audience that you devoted yourself to? You gave 50%, you gained 50%. Yourself, the self, was important to you. You lowered it to 25%, 75%, you gained 75%. You lowered it to nothingness, you gain life. And you cannot estimate it, you cannot show it, you cannot write it. If you have a whole vocabulary in this existence to explain it to people how you feel it, you won't be able to do so. Because that's a secret between you and God. It was accepted from one of them and it was not accepted from the other. That's how God said it. He said it in a passive voice. And why did he say it in a passive voice? You know, if he said it, if he had said it, I have accepted from one of them and I didn't accept from the other. Possibly it would cross our mind that the responsibility of acceptance and rejection would rely on God. If he had said it, what it would have crossed our mind to say it's God's responsibility. God 
just show you what well, that's why they put it in the passive voice eh? it was accepted from one of them it was rejected from of them because the responsibility or of the acceptance and the non-acceptance depend on them now where is the story where is the criminology? Where the study? Go deep inside. See, one of them who represents civilization, he was doing things along through the years, the week, the months, the year before. You know, he was doing things for God. Maybe, of course, you make sins, you make mistakes in life, you know, but he was constantly the conscience exposed to this to God. That's a worship, lordship. What about the other one? You cannot tell. You can tell when you see. You see the last challenge, here you can tell. The other one was not like that. The day of the sacrifice, perhaps their father told them, Adam, peace be upon him, told them to give a sacrifice to God. This guy, I'm talking about civilization, slaughtered or given animal that action before that action went you know the gesture there was an intention going to the receiver you have a transmitter to the receiver god says that's not the meat and the blood that will reach god he said the fear, how much you are with God, that's what will reach him. This is what he said about, you know, slaughtering an animal. It's not, they're not waiting for you to give it, you know, and God is it? Why? There is a sum, of, a sum of money that you like, you love. You buy a life, you understand, and then you slaughter that life. And why is that? The ego, the ego, what does it want, the ego? The ego wants the money because the past part to everything. I need the money, I don't want to give it. I want to give something, yes, I want something in return. So the person, what does he do? A trade between him and the ego. My ego, would you like if I buy something for your retirement? Yeah, sure, of course. You know, say 401k. Listen, I have this money. Yes, of course, the ego say yes. I'm going to invest it. What do you think? What are you going to do? Because the ego fears. I'm going to buy, you know, a life. It's going to work in front of you. You know, like uh, it could be a lamb, could be a sheep, could be a, you know, a bull, could be a cattle. I don't know. That's for your retirement. The ego feels happy. You understand? That's me. Again, it's me, me, myself, and I, and me. And if you give me the whole world, I'm going to look for another world. You know, greed. The wise mind buys it. Who is talking about here inside? Talking about, you know, money, I want more, I want more. It's not the mind. It's not the intellect. Appetite, sexual desires. This is what the ego is. And then he killed the animal. This ego starts screaming. But, but, the emperor, the governor, he is the king now. Before that, no. Population, the desires, they were controlling the mind, the center of the nervous system. Now, no, the nervous system himself is the controller. Getting back to the animal, he gave it to the Creator. Up to where? Where is the Creator? You know, that, you know, emotion, air bubble. Where did it go? That's inside the heart. It went all the way to, you know, expansion of the world. Do you understand? That's the expansion of the world is inside the person's psyche. He felt it. There is no need to give a proof. The other one, did he give it to God? He gave it to himself. It was to prove himself. It was a challenge. He had his brother as a challenger, a competitor, an opponent, to prove, to defy him. It's then defeat. That's why he did it. 
That's why God said it, it was accepted from one of them, it wasn't accepted from the other. This is how barbarism, and then all of a sudden he said, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> My God. Was there any religion background, any kind of religion, or religious sect? Was there any territorial division? Was there any kind of a political arena? Was there any kind of, hey, you have the whole world for you, take it. No, the problem is inside the person's psyche. This is what barbarism is. You can tell today what kind of embassies are existing in the world. These are the embassies of Mr. Lucifer. Put the flag and you do what I ask you to do. Understand? Every arena, every gladiatorial arena cannot live. What does he do? The person who is with this, he feels happy only when he finds a challenger down, when he devaluates. The same thing with bullying. You put someone down, you feel happy. You know, you, the people, they lie to, them, that to themselves. They say, I like a challenger. Do you really like a challenger if he's better than you? You're not going to like him. Don't lie to yourself. The true, you know, the true harmony is an ikhlas. And you know what I mean. The word is, is well known. Better known than Coca-Cola. <laughs> ikhlas is how pure with the creator. It's not because of show off, whatever. A whole civilization, supposedly civilization, that is built, it's a barbarism wearing civilization. I will kill you. And he killed him. Cain and Abel. And he killed him. God sent him a crow. An animal. To show him how to bury his brother. A person who is self-absorbed with the self-aggrandizement, you know, the self-aggrandizement, he is dealing with futilities, doesn't know what is reality. Instead of being preoccupied by remorse of conscience of what he did, he is looking for, he is preoccupied by his celebrity status. He say, how can, you know, the animals start digging the ground, the dirt to show his brother how to bury his, to show him how to bury his brother. He said, how can that be? How, for instance, naive I was, I didn't know how to bury the brother. Look at that. Do you understand those kind of hints that God put them in the Quran? He says he's preoccupied by this, not to cry about what he did, which is the case today. Killing is, is, uh, is a part of fuel. It starts from a human being, one. You know, human being, and then agglomeration, small, and then region, and then those who are you can select him or her with the word civilization. Yo, man, you have to walk with the candle in the middle of a sunny day, as one philosopher said it. I don't know, Aristo or Socrates, one of them or another one, I don't know. It's a very beautiful case. He was walking with the candle, a sunny day, in the middle of a bazaar, whatever. He was doing like this, looking, and then he said, what are you looking for? He said, I'm looking for a human being. He didn't say civilized, he didn't say polite, he didn't say human being. Those people who understood what does it mean a human being or what is an animal. Because today, today, the degradation of a human being is sinking. Listen, it's always a pleasure. Thank you very much for watching. And I'm sorry if I exaggerated. May the Lord open every door of happiness to you. See you soon.